episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Hey, how's everything going over the day, Millie? You going all right? Yeah, very good, very good. Um, I'm in Berlin doing promotion for the album. And, of course. Uh, um, waiting to release of Hate Your Wireless on Friday. Mate, June 10, I know it's only a couple of days away, but man, I've got to say, this album is incredible. <laughs> it's like one yeah, of the best metal you. releases of the year. It's got so much firepower. Oh, that's, that's, that's really nice to hear, man. Um, we're really looking forward to how the people will react to this. And our fans, uh, you know, we can't wait to hear the reactions of our fans and uh, play live for um, and play the, the songs live. And it's, it's, it's an exciting time, man. Well, I mean, the response for the singles so far have been pretty good. I mean, I, everything I've been seeing online, it's all, all positive. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, but if you, if you look at the... Um, um, to me, I still think in these categories of like the whole album experience, because yes. you get the full treatment if you listen to the all, the whole album, because it kind of tells a, a story, takes you on a musical journey. And um, the singles only reflect a part of it, you know, only little glimpses of what uh, what's what's to come. Well, I mean, the whole album's incredible, as I said before. So people just aren't prepared for how good it is i don't think Absolutely. i mean they've, they've got i mean they've had their little bit of a, a teaser but i've got to say the chorus to the title track is one of the best anthems i've ever heard ever that oh, thing is you, so fucking catchy man have you tested that out live yeah, yeah. and uh yeah the, the fans sing along right away which is rare for a new song you know yeah and, um yeah we just did a we just did a um um a um uh a festival show in on, on last thursday and um it really really showed in the audience that um the fans have listened to to the song over and over and they were so into it and um with such energy um playing a new song and people know the song by heart it, it's it's incredible man it's it's really cool yeah man yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, in, in regards to the title, Hate Uberalis, which, to my understanding, translates to hate above all, um, you know, that's relevant to so much of what's going on in the world on so many levels right now. What what inspired you to to call it that? What, was there something that happened in particular that triggered you to, you know, maybe right place at time? Um. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like the I'm talking in the, in the lyrics. I'll talk about the the way we communicate nowadays, like kind of mm. like hate speech and uh, like like um, especially in, on the internet when you when you when you're in the social media and it's like I have a different opinion and you have. We're not discussing things anymore. We're we're kind of like virtually yelling at each other rather than getting into um, a, 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 a kind of like a conversation and. Um, and also, it's like, um, of course, it kind of reflects time, the times right now. It's like, it, it's so much easier for people to be against something than to really embrace the, what they have. And so that kind of creates a lot of frustration. A lot of people seem to be very frustrated with, with the state of the world. I am too. Mm. That's why I wrote The Hate of Alice. Well, I mean, it's, it's definitely an intense period in time right now. I mean, I, I've been on this earth as long as the band's been going. But I tell you what, man, I've never experienced, I'm sure you're seeing the same thing over there, never experienced anything like this globally in the world, <laughs> all this garbage going on. Like, yes, it's just, yes. it's insane. And I guess it's all being filtered through art at the moment in, in incredible ways and how people are dealing with it. And I'm sure you know what I mean there. I absolutely do. Um, I think what we experience now is something that we, we, for some reason, we felt very safe in, in the way things were going. We felt, we felt we're very, um, very, um, how do I put this, 
we, we thought things wouldn't change. And all of a sudden the pandemic hit and we were all like, what the fuck, you know? And we're yeah. Like, mm. Especially artists that couldn't go out and play for their fans anymore. And um, it was kind of like a shock. And we were all like, nobody knew how long this would have would, would take. And it's still kind of kind of not gone, but it, it's, things are getting better. The world's opening back up. And like I said, we, we played a couple of shows and, and I, I, it's great to see people back together celebrating music because that's also a, a very, very important thing in our lives. And we cannot just, I think it's, it's um, definitely not healthy to not go to live concerts. You know, you need, I, mean, I do need, uh, I just went to see Ramshan yesterday and it's, it's some, it gives you so much, it gives you so much yeah. power, so much energy. And so it's an, it's an essential part of life in my life, at least. And I think in a lot of our fans' lives or most of our fans' lives as well. And um, it, it, it's, it's, it's great to see things are coming, finally coming back slowly but surely. 100%. How was that big Rams? Because, I mean, we'll never probably see that Ramstein show down here in Australia. It's so <laughs> big. How, 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 was, how was that experience? That must be massive. It was just massive. It was just, um, it was just, I don't know. It's it's hard to describe. You need to experience it. It's uh, it's like the biggest show you can ever see in, <laughs> at the moment on this planet. Really, I mean, um, it's, it's 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 an experience. It's um, and I'm not saying that um, uh, because uh, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it's very, it's it's really it really is an experience. Any anything that you can think of show wise and, and, and of like a monumental stage show and then and a, and a theatrical show it's it's that's what Ramshan does it's very very intense man that's crazy you're lucky <laughs> I'd love to <laughs> man, I'd love to have a beer with you over there watching that that'd be that'd be crazy but <laughs> but you know what man another good one uh on the album you know there's this other single which is Midnight Sun and that features singer uh Sophia Port how do you pronounce her last name is it Portanet Sophia Portanet Portanet mm-hmm. mate it's super interesting, you know, having female vocals come in for this band, especially this far in, in, into the career. I mean, what what inspired you for that? Basically, the song itself, because I'm 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 uh, I was inspired by the by the movie um, Midsummer by Ari Aster, yes. and um, and it's 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 a movie where the female character is very strong and very. Um, very evil and 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 it's kind of it talks about cults and um i was envisioning uh, uh, a female voice kind of like almost like a conversation between two characters mm. um and uh and sophia and me we were friends and uh, i invited her into the studio and um uh she really kind of I, I i tried to avoid to be honest with you i tried to avoid the typical in metal, there's it's it's very typical when you have like a uh, an intense like heavy band um, playing, and all of a sudden there's an operatic female voice coming in. I didn't want that. I wanted it to sound natural. I wanted it to sound um, uh, unique, but yet um, um, almost like Sophia is a part of the band. So um, I think we achieved that. Yeah, you guys sound amazing together. It was yeah, yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I will say the uh, the video is amazing. I, I haven't seen Midsummer embarrassingly enough, but uh, you know, I don't know if it's part of it. But that that chainsaw gave me massive anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I I really do like the the video. It's it's really cool. The the concept is really cool, and um, yeah, I'm happy you like it, man. It's it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the album cover was done by Elorane Cantor, who, who, who's just been making name for himself as an artist everywhere. And it's his his stuff is so phenomenal. I recently saw that he's having a gallery with all his works in it. You know, it, I'm hoping that y- your stuff is in there too. How's it been working with him? Like I said, he's he's a great artist, and um, we got together in berlin for coffee and i explained to him the title and the concept of the record um which was kind of like you know he, he kind of totally um he really clicked on a personal level and he was really um also a fan of our old artworks 
And um, so we got together and he, he said, OK, I'm going to come up with something. And um, he sent me like a, a sketch and then I, I uh, checked it out and it was almost there. It was almost what you see on the cover. Um, and he really kind of helped me um, in, in the visual, visual um, uh, aspect of the record overall. The visual concept is, uh, he was even there for those photo sessions for the album. So he made sure the colors match the, the cover. So it's, it's, it's a piece of art what he did for us. And um, not only on the on 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 uh, is the actual artwork, but also on the on the whole um, um, visual concept. I tell you what, though, there's that that box set, that special deluxe mm. edition. That yes. is, oh man! And with his art, with the lithograph, is that what you call yeah, it? Lithograph. Nice, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, man, yeah. man. Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice, and. Um, um, like I said, I'm happy to have him on board, and uh, it, it's 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 been it's been uh, amazing to work with somebody that en- understands what the band is all about. That made things so much easier, if you if you know what I mean. It, yeah. You didn't have to com- explain yourself as a band, you didn't have to explain the concept because he already knew all that. He was a fan of the band. He's a big metalhead, and um, he knows his, his metal and he knows creator. And it's so it was a win-win situation. You guys look like you put so much into that deluxe as well. I mean, with that booklet and everything, like I, it's it's next level. <laughs> I want one. It is. It is. I'm really happy, you know. And uh, and um, it's 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 great to have that support from a record company and then and, and, um, the people that um, allow us to to really come up. You know, for us, it's all about. Um, if we come put up uh, the, nowadays, everybody's putting out like box sets, but I always want the fans to have something really, really special. And um, I'm having this this whole like like photo book and and the and the and and, and the batch and and the the live album. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that live album that's from Bloodstock last year, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, one of our best shows. Um, we had um, it was like a Bloodstock festival for us. We headlined the Bloodstock. It was um, kind of like it was in the pandemic. It was still happening, and and UK wasn't didn't have a lockdown anymore. So they mm. were one of the first first countries that really opened up. And um, but for people coming from outside the country, it was uh, it was there was like a quarantine container um, ten days or something. So the we told the promoters like, we can't do it. We cannot come to to UK for, and have go into quarantine for ten days. They were like, you know what? We set everything up. We we give you a rehearsal space, um, and you can do pre production with uh, with everything. You know, like everything was being taken care of. And in the end of the day, it was a great experience because we did final tweaks on the album. Then we went into pre production for the show, and uh, had one of the best shows um, ever in the history of the band. And um, and um, we ca- caught that on 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 a live album, and that's all the bonus for the for the um, for for the for the for the for the rock set. Will it be available uh, in any other form, like a Blu-ray or anything? Like I saw I saw a couple of clips on online, and it was mm, just I think it insane. Will, I think it will, yeah, I think it will be. I think it will be digitally available, but I'm not sure. It will be available definitely. Man, with the fire and everything like that, like it just the vibe was there. Hey, you just even sitting down here having a beer, watching it on YouTube, it was definitely, <laughs> man, you you got that feeling that it was something special. So I'd like to watch it, all of it. I mean, you know, yeah, 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 experience. yeah. It was a good, it was a very special show. It was really good, cool. cool. So I mean, you're also going to be hitting the road uh, for some tour dates later in the year with Thy Art is Murder, our very own Thy Art is Murder, and and Cattle Decapitation and Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that lineup, dude, <laughs> it's massive. It's good, isn't it? Um, and I'm really happy to play with all these bands because we've never played before. And I know I'm, 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 I'm um, me and um, Mark from from um, Lamb of God, we. We, we did a promotion for this tour like yeah, last year when we met up in, in London before the pandemic came. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, finally this tour is going to happen in the end of the year, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> 
man, I, Australia's got to be on there somewhere. Yeah, that will be. It will be. Um, we'll, 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 um, we are looking at beginning of next year. Oh, dude. I'll yeah, be there. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward because it's been a while, right? It's been like four years or something. And uh, it seems like an eternity. So we, it's time for us to come back to Australia, absolutely. Yeah, because, it, man, it, I don't know how it is for you, but that two-year block feels like it's 10. So I know, these... man. I know, absolutely. It, it kind of, it's, it's like a mind fuck, isn't it? It's like, yeah. you're like, fuck, man, where did these two years go? And it's like, now when things are getting back to normal here in Europe, it's like, it seems like, why, what happened? What just, what did just happen in the last two years? And um, yeah, uh, just, we need to, we need to, I think maybe it was kind of like a wake up call to not take everything for granted. Maybe mm-hmm. if there's something good in this pandemic. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, hopefully yeah. it's over now, and uh, we go can go back to what we um, do best: playing live for the people and um, <clears throat> having um, celebrating metal, crushing the stages, man. And of course, I'm gonna lock in for first start of next year. I'm gonna put it on the calendar. Is there any dates? <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> it... No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I want to steal that date on our, our family calendar. So, so you know. <laughs> Make it a family out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but mate, Millie, it's it's always great hanging out with you, man. And uh, this new creator album, Hey Do Alice, is uh, just absolutely crushing. It comes out this week on June 10th through Nuclear Blast. We'll have all the links in the show notes here, mate. You take care of yourself, and we'll keep the beers nice and cold for you. I absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, man. Nice talking to you. <laughs>